Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. All right, here we go. Today on the show is Herman Chan. Herman is a part of that unique class of celebrity agent that is just now being developed. When I say celebrity, I don't mean that he represents celebrities, but Herman himself is a celebrity. Human Herman has a huge following on Twitter and Facebook. He is a writer, a sought-after speaker that has been featured on places like the Huffington Post, MTV, MSNBC, and CBS. Herman is ranked by clout as one of the top 50 most influential people in the real estate worldwide. Herman, thanks for taking the time out today. Sure, any time for you, Toby. (laughs) Well, hey, Herman, kick us off. Tell us a little about yourself and your business. Oh, gosh, that's going to be three hours, but in a nutshell, um, I'm a San Francisco Bay Area native. Um, I went to Berkeley, and I got into real estate fairly young, Um, and it's just been a great ride these past 10 years, Um, so I sell pretty much residential, do some commercial, um, and... Um, you know, just all walks of life, but primarily, you know, being in the Bay Area, I focus on um, investors from abroad and IT tech people, millennials. Um, yeah, so, you know, I, I love helping people who are very tech savvy and educated, um, not unlike myself. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, now, you kind of have an interesting story. Um, uh, what did you do before you got into real estate or before you started your current company? Okay, well, before I started LuxSFHomes.com, I was straight out of Berkeley, and I, my first job was working at the Gap corporate as an analyst. And I was, you know, it was just the most depressing time in my life. I mean, I went from being autonomous over my schedule as a student for 22 years of my life, and then all of a sudden I had this odd entity telling me and owning me for 70 hours of the week. And, you know, I was I was very unhappy because and I think many people out there who are transitioning to real estate or want to get into the business are in this situation where they think, oh, I'm caught in this horrible job. And there has to be something more to life than sitting at a desk crunching numbers all day. <laughs> you know, and I mean, my thought was, gosh, I was 22 years old. And if you're going to own me for 70 hours, you better be giving me like six digits of a salary, right. which wasn't even the case. So I, I just knew there had to be another way. Um, so I swapped around for a little bit. I made some print work, and then my mom really was just a little upset with me. I think she was like, "You know, we didn't flee China, and we didn't put you through years of Berkeley um, just so you could just be flopping around." So she wanted to get your real estate license and just kind of stay afloat for a while, do a couple of deals a year. And you know, being the overachiever I am, I you know I sold like so many homes the first year. And I thought, "Oh, this is great. I mean, it offers me a great lifestyle, and it's a great you know pay." And um, I. I'm my own boss, and this is really great for someone who's entrepreneurial and very ambitious and, um, and you know, just, just wants to kill it. So I, I found my calling. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. Uh, you glossed over something that, that I think is pretty important or, or interesting. So you, you were at Gap Corporate, and in, uh, a minute ago you said print work. But you ended up being a model. You, just, you, you landed into being a model, I mean, that, right? I, I was, yes, but uh, thank you for outing me, Toby. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it was part of my um, – History, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then you, okay, and then you became a successful real estate agent. So you know, yeah. when when it, new agents out there, or even people who have been doing it for a while, you know, tell me, what do you think the single biggest thing is that most realtors get wrong? I think, um, and I don't know if it's generational or regional, but it's it's very much about um, learning new things. Mm. Because the thing about real estate is that you can still transact real estate like 80 style, like faxing offers and stuff like that. You can still do that. Doesn't, you know, it's not, you know, you, you can do a deal that way. But the way that technology is moving so fast, um, I, people, I see people left behind all the time, all the time. And I just think that people don't want to learn. I feel like they're, we're being taught by certain brokers and maybe just the, the courses out there, they're very it's old school or maybe just not, you know, up to snuff with what's going on right now. And so... Um, I oftentimes I see colleagues losing out because um, they didn't answer that tweet fast, fast enough, or maybe um, uh, you know the, the agents nowadays are just really tech savvy too. They're just like you know, don't call me, just text me or, or, or email me the offer. I mean, it's just really, really um, 
technologically oriented. So I, this is this desire to learn and embrace technology and use social media is, is really where I'm kind of seeing people um, falling behind in, in, in real estate. Right. You know, I'll tell you something. I, I flipped a bunch of houses uh, it, from 08 to 2012, and I found it amazing that, that a couple things. Number one, a lot of uh, brokers, or I'm sorry, agents still use a fax. And then some of them use DocuSign. But even still today, people are like, I'm like, just – I'll dock you sign it. And they're like, what? Well, we don't have yeah. that yet. I'm like, how do you not have that? You know, and then uh, so so those yeah. people, you know, people who don't know what DocuSign is or not using it or uh, still using the facts, certainly they haven't uh, moved their business into uh, building a brand or, on it, right, using social media. Talk a little bit about that because that's, that's, that's your sweet spot right there. That's your wheelhouse. <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, I really started – well, first of all, social media has been this, this really overused term, and I'm almost sick of saying it, but we need to create a new term for it because it's gotten yeah. so – such a big monster. It's, it's all-encompassing, and it doesn't mean anything at this point anymore because it's, the, that business is changing so fast. It's like the word um, disrupt. People use that way too. Yeah, much. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting to the point when people are saying, you know, the word interesting. Oh, that dress is so interesting. What does that mean? Does it mean anything? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's interesting. I mean, so bland. Um, yeah, well, years ago I started, um, as you can tell, Toby, I've got a bit of a personality, right? <laughs> so um, I, I thought, well, what a great way to just kind of put myself out there. So I started doing this video blog um, where I was just kind of shooting videos of myself and talking about the business and short sales and whatever was happening at the time. Um, and I just launched this site called Habitat for Hermanity, <laughs> play on words, dot com. And, um, and from there, I just started getting, you know, more and more attention. And, and um, you know, I really got onto Twitter very early on and Facebook. And I just kind of knew this was something, this was something interesting. Because, you know, the media picked up on it and I started getting calls to, Weigh in on certain issues because they've seen my video blog and they knew what I was saying. I had an opinion, so you know I realized, wow, if the media is picking up on this, um, they asked me for quotes and citations. Like I'm sure buyers are and sellers are loving this too because you know clearly that establishes me as an authority, um, and people are already vetting me online, which is great. You know, mm-hmm. so I realized people nowadays in technology, they, they, I mean, they just look and vet houses and agents for months before they even reach out to you. Like agents think, oh, when they get that phone call, they're they're like a clean slate. No. <laughs> when someone calls you up, like they've already like probably Googled you <laughs> and vetted you and followed your Twitter feed for maybe like the past three months, you know. <laughs> so um nothing's gonna be fresh. So, you know, I realized that this is where the business is gonna go. It's like when people are always online and, and mobile, it's like you need I, I realize I have to have a very, very strong presence online so that when they call me. I already know I have them. If they're if they're to the point of calling me, like they already basically decided, like ninety percent of the way. So that's where it's so important for me to kind of um, you know update my blog regularly and really get my tentacles out there and all of social media. Um, and you know even even like five years ago when I started video blogging, no one else was doing it. Now people are doing it more and more often. And back then it was like tweets, right, and Facebook updates. But nowadays no one even has time. To read 140 characters. I mean, that's how fast the business has changed. It's like now it's all visual. Everything is pictures. So you know, my favorite tool now is like Instagram, which I'm really loving because now I can post like to multiple platforms at the same time. So if I take a picture on Instagram, it's it's great for my branding because I can push it into Foursquare, my Tumblr, and my Facebook all at the same time with one push of a button. I love it. And the best thing is it's just visual. It's a picture. <laughs> right. So that's my tool. I, I, my, newest, my, my newest thing I'm telling people is that, you know, like there's this one girl in Berkeley. She, um, she calls herself like a craftsman specialist, right? Now, as you and I both know, okay, I do have a deal. So it's like, like if someone offers to sell, you know, the loft to her, she's not going to say no, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. But she, she goes around town just taking pictures of, of different um, craftsmen homes in the Bay Area. And, it doesn't mean she sold them. It's just saying that's just her niche. It's what she likes. She likes. So she's procuring her niche, her vibe, her yeah. her, her followers that way. And so even just by it's like guilt by association. Just by association, all those images that pop up when someone googles her name or when they follow her. I mean, she is establishing her brand, her specialty, just visually. And she doesn't even have to say anything, <laughs> really. I mean, just like oh, look at this crown molding. Oh, look at this. It was built nine twenty six by someone's architect. I mean, just by nature, the audience fills in the gaps. Which is great. I mean, it's not like she's lying about anything. She's just talking about what she loves, and that's that's what people resonate with. So, I mean, 
Yeah, that is, that's fantastic. That's really that's that's fantastic. First of all, uh, uh, you know the I think with most people, what's tough about you know starting a blog or you know I mean you you've got I mean you've built your brand. You started it five years ago. A lot of people are just now starting off, and what's tough about it is that uh, you know you're, you're writing or or you know your video blogging whatever, and you, you don't have an audience, right? And you're doing all this work, and and uh, you're not seeing any results, and no, you you feel like nobody's listening. But but I I think you know what you pointed out earlier is. People are listening, right? I mean, they, but they may not yes. be interacting with you, but you're, you're getting that message out there. Yes, it's not about having 10,000 views and going viral. I mean, you're not an internet sensation. It's just, you know, if you have one person who's following your, your, your post about Victorians or something like that, or condo conversions, I mean, that's like, what, $30,000 commission check? I mean, it's worth it to post it once in a while, once a week. I mean, isn't that worth that, you know, posting a picture here and there once a week Absolutely. on your Instagram feed? I mean, it's, and, you know, I always tell agents, like, you know, people always say, oh, I don't have time, I don't have time, and I just feel like it's not something you should, it's not a chore. If you think of it as a chore, like, I, how much time I have to allot to this every week, Carmen? I'm like, it's not that. If you have your phone with you, you're on a smartphone, and if you're not, shame on you, but if you're on a smartphone, you're attached, you know, the, the, it's attached to your hip. You're going on broker tour, you're going on inspections every single day of your life. Trust me, there is a moment there. There is a media moment everywhere. <laughs> I mean, just snap a picture if you're going on broker tour. You have three pictures right now. You can just say, oh, my God, this is the pick of the week. Oh, this is a great deal. It, it's anything, anything. <laughs> wow, that is, that's great advice, Herman. Let me ask you this. I want, I want to get personal a little bit. You know, was there ever a time when, you know, you just felt like it was just too hard, you wanted to quit? And, and you know, how did you push through that roadblock and find success for yourself? Hmm. Well, I don't want to take it back to the gap, and I'm not trying to slag on them or anything, but I, I was very, very depressed during that time, and I just, I did not know any other way. I was stuck in a job. I mean, I, I went to, you know, a college, and I grew up in a kind of upper middle class you know, upbringing, and I didn't know that there was another way. I, I thought I just had to go to a good school, get good grades, and then, you know, um, get into a Fortune, Fortune 500 company and, and be happily, you know, moving on. But I realized early on, thankfully, that there's another way. I, I, you, I can be my own boss. You know, I, I just realized that I don't want to play by anyone's rules. And that's the thing about real estate agents. I think that the people who are very successful as realtors do have a bit of a problem with authority. <laughs> that's why we go into business for ourselves. We start our own companies. We start our little mini businesses and teams. Um, but we're also go-getters. Um, and so how I powered through that was, you know, I just looked at what I wanted out of my life. You know, I was sitting there every single day at my desk, like crying sometimes in the bathroom. Yes, I admit it, I cried. Um, <laughs> And I just thought, this, how can this be? I did everything right in my life, and I'm so depressed. This is this is not what you know the universe or God or whoever had in store for me. I just refused to believe that, you know. And um, I just I, I had to find a niche where I was able to to flourish with my personality and my talents. Um, and thank God I came across real estate. Thanks, mom. Um, <laughs> and so that's, that's how I powered through it. Um, and in real estate, gosh, every day is a challenge. I mean, it's every deal is different. So, um, but there have been times, you know, when sometimes I feel like I might this is worth it. Like it's it's the, the, the time that I feel the worst because I'm a people person. I love people, and that's why people resonate with me. It's like when I when when clients like betray you, you know, and or mislead you. That's when I I feel like wow, I just. I, I don't know how I can get over this, but I do the next day. You know, it hurts, but I realize that, you know, there are other clients out there. I know I did the best I could, and I just have to stay true to myself. I don't want to over-obsess about, you know, wackadoos out there. <laughs> so I just I just staying true to myself and, and knowing that I'm doing my best is how I power through um, kind of adversity. Herman, give, give us an example of that. Tell me what that looks like when somebody betrays, you know, a client betrays you. What? Tell me about that. Tell me one, Tell me a story. Well, um, well, you know, like there's, it's, it's, I think the worst is when it's with a friend. Like I had a friend of mine, I helped her with this um, property that she was, you know, wanted to sell, and she was just really, um, you know, very meek about it. And I really, really should have kind of gotten a little sense of her being uneasy with everything, but, you know, she approached me, and she was chasing after me to look to her, so, I mean, I, it's not like, I, I, and I wanted to help, because I have a big heart, I wanted to help her out, right, mm -hmm. so I, I did all this, I did all this work, and I got her a great, amazing offer, and it was really, this was during the downtime, during the recession, when it was just really, just, 
you know. Yeah. Um, a disaster for everyone. And I got her a great offer after spending thousands and thousands of dollars in marketing this property. And I mean, she just decided she doesn't want to sell. Mm. <laughs> and then I, I just thought, I felt like she, and of course, she has the right to change her mind, but I felt like, why did you mislead me for all this? these you know, all these all these months and and i mean I, it was just really hurtful for me in, in many ways um and um I, I didn't know really what to do about it i mean ultimately um i realized that she didn't respect me as a person or as a professional or as a friend so um i just kind of kept my distance from her and you know that that friendship kind of severed a little bit but you know that that's really you know, it, it was very, it was very difficult for me to 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 go through because I get attached to my clients. I treat them like they're all, like my family, <laughs> or my friends, and so I, I. This one was especially her book. She was my friend, but um, you know, I got over it. I got over it. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I realized you got to follow your heart. My instinct, my gut, in the beginning, I should have known. Like she, she was still. Although she was coming after me to lift her place, I, there, there are certain things in my mind that she had said that were kind of wavering, and I don't know why. I think I put my blinders on because she was my friend. Right. If, you, if she was my client, just strictly a client, I would have said, you know what, you're not ready to sell, or you're, you're, maybe you should reconsider this. Um, but because she was my friend, I wanted to help her out so much. I think I, I you know, I, I was a little blind to that. So, I mean, maybe I'm blaming myself, but, I mean, um, no, it's her fault. <laughs> she must like me. <laughs> but, well, you know, you know, earlier, Herman, you mentioned that, you know, clients vet you, and I think it's important, you know, as agents that, you know, when somebody comes to you with a with a, a listing or whatever, that, that you spend some time and vet them, you know, right? Find out, you know, Absolutely. do you really, you know, before you put a, a ton of time and, and money and energy into it. So you were lucky, Herman, that you found uh, that you found real estate when you did. Tell me, tell me about that first breakthrough deal or that eureka moment when you said, "Man, I have found my calling. I found my passion." <laughs> um, well, uh, you know, the funny thing is that when I first started this job, it was just to pay the bills. I, did, I, I that's why I went into it. I never really, because most people, when you ask that question, will say, "Oh, my first moment of Eure- my Eureka moment was when I handed over the keys to my new buyers, and they were so happy." Right. I, I never, I never <laughs> got that. Feeling. I just like, "Yeah, I got to finally get paid." Right. Um, for me, I, the moment I felt like I knew what I was doing was meant for me was not so much validation from my clients, which I get, of course, but just from the industry, like when I started getting asked to speak at different conferences, like that's when I really knew, wow, people actually care what I'm saying. And, and, and there are a lot of lost people out there, <laughs> um, real estate agents, who, who just kind of need some little brightness in their life and a little doll of humanity <laughs> and some advice. And so when I'm speaking and I get people coming after, afterwards to talk to me about stuff in their life, I, that's when I really feel like it's worth it. That's when I really feel like I, it's I've made it. When people are, are asking me for uh, like like um, what they should do with their careers and stuff like that, and, and that's that just makes me feel so good. That's when you really. have, you feel like a super agent when you when you get yes. to, when you get to coach people. Yes, exactly, exactly. And you know, maybe one day that's going to be my future career. I, I don't know. Yeah. But right now, I'm just walking home. But you know, I think I think I do. I am coaching people to a certain degree. Just just you know, via conferences and speaking and even things like this. And I thank you so much for this opportunity. Hopefully you know, some of your listeners will, will find some usefulness in my, <laughs> my pontifications. <laughs> if nothing else, I'm sure they'll, it's entertaining for sure. No, but you're, there's some good stuff here. Um, so, you know, let's, let's get to some nuts and bolts of it. How, you know, you, you have a lot of stuff going on. You're a speaker, you're, you know, you're on TV shows, uh, and you're also, as you say, hawking homes. How do you stay productive and focused on a day-to-day basis? How do I stay focused? Or productive. I mean, do you have any rules about, you know, uh, you don't answer emails until 10? Or, you know, how do you stay oh, no, productive? no, no, no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love it when I get that voice now from people saying, oh, um, I will return your calls at 12 o'clock or 5 o'clock, and if it's yeah. Friday, I will call you on Monday. And I thought, if I were a buyer, I'm like, I need to offer now. <laughs> um, but I don't, I don't really have very many rules. I mean, I, I, really, I literally am on like 24-7. <laughs> and I know that that's not very necessarily healthy for many people who are married or have children or have obligations. Um, I don't have a partner, and I don't have pets or kids or plants, so I <laughs> have the leeway to, to do that. Um, 
Um, and I enjoy it. I, I really don't feel I have any off time or on time. I, I don't. I, it's my, my I, it's a lifestyle. I really feel real estate to be successful is a lifestyle. It's like something you live and breathe. Uh, I don't. Um, I, I don't have rules where I'm only answering things in the morning. It's just like real estate runs my life and <laughs> vice versa. Um, the way I do things though, it's I'm very ADD. So I have to respond to things right away. <laughs> if I don't, and things are coming at me all day long, just like any real estate agent, right? Like if I don't respond to it pretty soon, like it gets, it goes to the cracks. Yeah. So I, for me, I realize that I really need to kind of be on top of the spot. And you know what? Clients want that nowadays too. They say the different studies where they say, you know what? If someone reaches out to you and they don't get a response in, you know, a couple of hours, you just move on to someone else. I think that's so true. That's just so true. So you just can't wait anymore like half a day <laughs> to respond. Um, yeah, I mean, and the, you, know, you know, and I, I'll, I'll just jump in here a little bit. And I think that's why those those people who uh, they want to be, you know, mompreneurs out there, and they're like, oh, well, I'll sell real estate on the side. You know, this is definitely something you have to be immersed in. It, you have to jump in with both feet, and it's 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 either all or nothing. You, you can't be part time and be successful. Yeah, I don't. I think being a part time agent. Um, Actually, I just was quoted recently on Bankroid.com about this um, part-time agent, and I just think they're the worst. And I know that I'm going to get flack for saying that because, you know, 90% of the business, as you know, Toby, 90% of the business is done by 10% of the agents. So, you know, that's a lot of part-time people out there working, and I understand that's just kind of the allure of working in real estate is that you get to do your own thing. But I, I ultimately feel it's a disservice to your clients because like, I always know when I'm working with a part-time agent because – they only return my phone calls at noon and after five, right. meaning the lunch break or once they clock out. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it is all consuming. And I, th- I think everyone goes into the business for different reasons. Like if you want to be a super agent and, you know, it, it does consume your life. And, you know, it's, it's not a bad thing. I, I welcome that. I, I, I thrive in that environment. But for some people who may just may want to sell one or two homes a year and have their – partner support them for whatever reason then that's fine too but i mean i don't i wouldn't work with them if i was <laughs> if i was a client um so you know it, it, it is it's something you really need to commit to um to, to to really have a huge success so in terms of lessons i mean that's something that, that i think people need to know but for you personally what is the biggest lesson you've learned in your business selling real estate the biggest lesson I've learned in selling real estate is how to say no. Hmm. <laughs> I am a, like many real estate agents out there, um, we're pleasers. We, you know, we're very customer service oriented. Well, at least the good ones are. And we want to satisfy people. And, you know, when I was starting, of course, I was young. I was hungry. I wanted to meet my numbers and make success. And, you know, I would just take anyone on. It didn't matter if I was, if they were mean to me or if they were, you know, there was one guy who was sexually harassing me too. I mean, like, oh I, I would put up with, yeah, I would put up with anything back in the day because I wanted that deal. <laughs> but um, I realized, you know what? There is power to saying no. There is a power to saying no, and it made my life so much easier and much less frenetic because when I would say no, people wanted me more. Right. <laughs> and I, people, I've heard that my entire life. I never believed it until now. It's like when you, people, uh, for some reason, you know, I, I get to pick and choose my clients now, which is great. And if I don't like them, I'll just refer to someone else. Um, but they still knock on my door. <laughs> and I, I just realize it's okay to say no. Yeah, that is a skill you have or, to learn. And it's hard to say no. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you this. What, what's something I didn't ask you, but I should have asked you? What will I be doing in 10 years? What will you be doing in 10 years, Herman? <laughs> it's a uh, see, in 10 years, I'll probably still be involved somehow in real estate, um, but uh, I, I'm really excited about some new prospects on the horizon. Um, um, I had a TV show that was optioned uh, recently, and hmm. Hmm. Um, and I'm working on a, a new book called Looking Up. Um, it's a collection of all my images um, that I've been taking from my Instagram, so um, I've been getting some good feedback about that. and. Um, yeah, so probably more media as always, um, but it's going to be more, I think, um, uh, you know, probably more didactic and teaching, coaching type of role. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. For well, a- we'll see. 
And if worse comes to worse, I can always go back to hockey homes, right? Well, there you go. <laughs> it's not a bad career. It's always there. <laughs> Herman, for for a new agent or or an experienced agent, if you could recommend only one book, what would that book be? Oh, um, I was going to actually say you should write your own book. I think everyone should write their own book. A simple ebook. Put it on your website. It can be 15 pages, a short guide to short sales, or you know the best FYI, you know FYI tips for buying in your neighborhood. I mean, just pump it out there. Put it up on Amazon to self-publish it. It just establishes you as an expert. <laughs> it's cheap. And I, Everyone yeah, should write their own book. Yeah. Well, and I'll tell you right now, um, there has been no easier time in the world to go out and and publish your work. Exactly. I mean, you can literally. No one says it has to be a. No one says it has to be a bestseller or it has to be really, really good. It's just another extension of your brand. It's just like it's just another way for people to download something off your website, for you to talk about, to give them the closing gift, to, to give them when you first meet them. I mean, it's just something for them to share with their friends. It's it's another part of your brand. Well, we're certainly looking forward to, to your book looking up come out. <laughs> Thanks, Herman. Do you have an internet tool like an Evernote that you are in love with? I actually am not a big – I just haven't gotten around to using too much of Evernote. I am obsessed with DocuSign, and I told you that um, Instagram is my newest love because I'm able to hit so many platforms at one time visually. It takes me no effort at all. <laughs> so um, – and it's it's amazing. I mean, that's how my book came along. Some publisher, The Chronicle, and San Francisco saw one of my pictures, and they wanted to publish it. And you just never know who's watching. Right. So, you know, if the Chronicle came across my pictures about something I was shooting in some house, <laughs> trust me, clients are looking too. <laughs> well, Herman, give us give us one person. Everyone should get on Instagram. You know what's funny? You know what's funny? I, I am on Instagram, and uh, and I don't use it. I should. After listening to you, I'm going to I'm gonna jump on it today and play You know why? It. Toby, listen. Listen. You know why? Now, this is a great question you're bringing up because there's every other month, it's going to be a new platform is out, right? It's going to be Vine or it's going to be Snapchat or, Snapchat or something. It's always something new. The thing about Instagram and social media in general, I know it's very overwhelming, but you have to always remember you're telling a story to your clients or to the public. You are crafting a narrative to them. So, for example, if someone's on Instagram and they're, they're selling real estate and I follow them, I don't want to see pictures of your kids right. and your food and your pets. I mean, it confuses me. I'm thinking, are you a food foodie person who's a stay-at-home mom, a soccer mom? I mean, that, that does not mean real estate to me. <laughs> you know, if you, it's okay to be have a personal life in, in your – but it has to be very covert. Like, oh, I've just finished a soccer game and I'm going to be off to my open house now. You have to always tie it back to your brand. This is what people always get mixed up on. They, they just, they just, it's just like a mishmash of stuff. And people, there's so much white noise out there. You have to, you have to filter things for, for people, especially when people only really give you a minute online when they're vetting you. I mean, they're just going to take one quick look at you, and you just kind of get the general gist. And then, you know, if everything matches, then they'll call you. But otherwise, if they get confused, they're, they're moving on. Tell a story. Fantastic advice. The brand must, the brand must be seamless. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Herman, give us one piece of parting advice, and you may have just did it, but give us one piece yeah. and uh, let us know where we can find you, and we'll sign off. Don't be afraid to try anything. Love it. Just give social media a try. You know, if you fail, you can just turn it all off. It's not that big of a deal. Just embrace it, but if you do, make your brand seamless. Always tie it back to what you're good at and what your expertise is. Don't be someone you're not, because the thing about social media is – Everyone can tell when you're faking it. <laughs> you can't hide. You have to be transparent and authentic. That's my advice. So where you can find me as a good example of that is habitatforhumanity.com, which is my main um, web portal. And from there you can find out all my other little um, crazy videos and my wackadoo <laughs> social media sites. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, yeah, I, I'm certainly following you, Herman, and I'm sure a lot of our audience are going to jump on there and uh, learn from your blog. Well, Herman, you are certainly a, an easy guy to talk to, so thanks so much for coming on the show, and uh, we'll keep a lookout. It was my pleasure. It was super fun. Thanks, Toby. Cool. Hey, thank you, Herman. Okay, you heard it, folks. That was Herman Chan on why you should embrace technology, procure a niche, and start establishing your brand. I hope that you can take one thing from this episode and implement it in your business today. Remember, take action, be passionate, 
and dream big. Until next time, I'm Toby Salgado, and I personally thank you for listening to Super Agents Live. Let's go! Yeah! For those of you that want to know what we're all about, it's like this, y'all. This is 10% luck, 20% skill, 15% concentrated power.